This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. In the following video, I will be talking about a dangerous trend. Facebook is relying on Islamic scholars like Yasir Qadi to fact check claims about Islam. When I first found out about this from watching David Wood's video, I couldn't believe my eyes. David Wood made a video about how Joe Biden has accidentally called on jihad against America. And when people tried to share his video on Facebook, it got banned for spreading false information. And guess who decided it was fake news? Yasir Qadi. This creates a dangerous precedent, a precedent that if anyone says anything negative about Islam, even if it's true, it will be fact-checked and blocked by proponents of that religion. This is very, very bad. A few months ago, I posted a video titled, Joe Biden Accidentally Calls for Jihad Against America. It has over half a million views. The video is yet another example of an American politician quoting Muhammad in order to win some votes from Muslims. Biden said, Hadith from the Prophet Muhammad instructs, whomever among you sees a wrong, let him change it with his hand. If he is not able, then with his tongue. If he is not able, then with his heart. So according to David Wood, the changing it with your hands refers to establishing Islamic law through jihad as one means. This is his opinion, but apparently he's not allowed to say this now because a Muslim scholar determined it was wrong. David made it very clear in the video that this was definitely not intentionally done by Joe Biden, but rather it was probably just a nice sounding quote they put in the speech. To David, quoting scripture without context is dangerous and he has the right to say this. Now you might be wondering, how on earth did this happen? Why would Facebook ban people from posting a video that's an opinion piece on their own page? And what does Yasir Qadi have to do with any of this? It's just Facebook being Facebook. But later on in this video, David explains. And now this interesting comment. Facebook now declares this video to be partly false because Yasir Qadi said so. I thought this comment was a joke, but it turns out he's not joking. I went to PolitiFact's analysis of my video where I read, Yasser Qadi, a prominent cleric and dean of the Islamic Seminary of America, said the Hadith encourages Muslims to act if they see something that goes against their moral values. If they can't, they should say something about it, or in the very least, disagree with it in their hearts, Qadi said. Even the radical jihadists don't use this particular hadith to justify their misinterpretations, Qadi wrote to PolitiFact by email. Jihad in Arabic literally means struggle. So Facebook is relying on Yasir Qadi to police what others say about Islam. And I, my jaw just dropped and I laughed. I said, are you serious? Indirectly, through the PolitiFact website, Yasir Qadi now has the power to shut down posts on this topic. Yasir Qadi has been promoted to gatekeeper of Islamic fact-checking on Facebook. He is now the Mufti al-Facebook. He goes, hear me out, hear me out! This is a really willing trend for a social media platform to go in. There's another problem too. The political fact check is actually criticizing a totally different article. An article posted by a group called Voice of America that claims that Joe Biden is calling for a Muslim Jihad. This page is obviously over the top and its claims are ridiculous. Somehow they flagged David Wood's video even though it's not the same article that the fact check is connected to. Unlike this site which has zero nuance and really does seem to be a tinfoil hat style propaganda website, David Wood made it clear that this may have been an innocent mistake on Biden's part. He wasn't calling for some intentional jihad or something. Joe Biden's speechwriter might be a total moron who did a Google search for great quotes from the Prophet Muhammad and put this quote into the speech without realizing what the quote is actually about. So there's an actual argument being made here, and it's not a tinfoil hat one either. It's an argument for being more careful about quoting Islamic sources you don't really understand. So the campaign didn't respond to these claims. What did Facebook do? Turn to the great holes in the Quran, Yasir Qadi would determined that this is fake news. To be clear, even if Yasir Qadi is right that the page was misrepresenting the Hadith, there is a big problem here. Wu will fact check the fact checkers. 
This is why we need free speech. If someone gets to decide who speaks and who doesn't, other than the few exceptional legitimate reasons to limit free speech, then a society will go astray. Now to focus on what Joe Biden said, is the hadith really controversial? Does it really call for intolerance, hate and violence? On the surface, the hadith may seem like a good hadith. After all, what is so bad about telling people that if they see something wrong, they should make an effort to stop it? But the issue is, Islam defines what is wrong. According to Islam, homosexuality is wrong, women not covering themselves is wrong, fornication, blasphemy, apostasy, music, and so many other things that we consider okay are wrong in Islam. So yes, if you take the hadith in context, people do have the right to be angry at what Joe Biden said. It's a cheap tactic. Not only is he accidentally calling Muslims to take action against secular and liberal values, but he's also encouraging Muslims to continue holding bigoted religious views by citing hadith like this. But Joe Biden said, I should listen to Prophet Muhammad, a Muslim will say. The hadith doesn't say that if you see someone bullying an LGBT or beating their wives or taking multiple wives, you should take action against it. The hadith says if you see someone doing something wrong. And who defines what is wrong according to that hadith and Islam, the Quran and Sunnah. But obviously this is not what Joe Biden meant. I agree. This is definitely not what he meant. He made a mistake. But do you not think that someone like Joe Biden should be more careful about what he cites? Do you not see why his statement might be willing to some people? Of course, the liberal Muslims will take that hadith to only mean something along the lines of what Joe Biden believes this hadith means. But there are also Muslims who read this hadith and say, yes, we cannot accept Western or secular values. We must always consider them wrong. And yes, if someone commits blasphemy, apostasy, homosexuality, fornication, or anything that's wrong in Islam, we should try to take action against that. If someone's selling alcohol, if someone's promoting music or doing something like that, we should fight them with our hands or with our tongues. Even if this action isn't physical, just refusing to turn away from opening their minds to new ideas is wrong and dangerous. Not something a presidential candidate of a democratic party should be quoting out of context to gain more Muslim votes. This cheap tactic from politicians must end. As I will remind everyone, as David Wood said, this is not an issue of Republican versus Democrat, of left versus right. This is an issue of politicians saying dumb things and needing to stop saying dumb things. In conclusion, Yasser Qadi, like the Islamic governments that exist all over the world, wants to ban criticism of Islam, wants to shut down murtads or ex-Muslims because he can't handle Islam being questioned or criticized. And since Facebook is biased to allow Muslim content and censor content critical to Islam, it seems like they saw no issue with complying to his request. Even though the fact check was for a completely different article, they blindly applied it to David Wood's video, which is a totally different opinion piece on the Biden video. Joe Biden's campaign refused to comment on this issue to provide clarification as Facebook has decided to allow Islamic scholars to decide who's right here. How far is this going to go? Is Facebook going to start having Muslim fact checkers check any post that criticizes Islam? Is YouTube going to do the same? Based on the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's hope that doesn't happen. For now, keep supporting ex-Muslim pages and channels however you can. Thank you to my patrons for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who likes and shares and comments on my videos. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.